اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Introduction to Mediation Up to this point, we have focused on one construct that directly influences the other construct in a SCM model. Let's now examine how the influence of two constructs may take an indirect path through a third variable which we can call a mediator. In these situations, the third variable will actually intervene on the influence between the two constructs. That's why a mediating variable is also referred to as an intervening variable. In testing if mediation or the presence of a mediator in a model, you will actually need to understand some of the terminologies which are direct effect, indirect effect and total effects. Now have a look here. This C actually represents the relationship between X and Y and this is the total effect. Why? Because there is no other variable in the model and the effect of X and Y can be referred to as the total effect. Now here, the relationship between X and Y is represented by a C complement and this relationship here is referred to as direct effect because some of the effect may be passing through this other variable which is the mediating variable. So what happens is X influences M and M influences Y. Now in this case a direct effect is simply a direct relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable in presence of the mediator and is represented by C complement. So the influence of X on Y in presence of a mediator is represented by C complement and this is referred to as direct effect. Here it was total effect because there was no mediator present. An indirect effect is the relationship that flows from an independent variable to a mediator and then to the dependent variable and is calculated by multiplying A into B. So your indirect effect is actually the relationship that flows from X to M, which is your mediator, and M to Y, where the relationship from X to M is represented by A and M to Y is represented by B. And you can calculate your indirect relationship by multiplying A into B. So the term total effect is actually the combined effect, that is your direct effect and your indirect effect. So if you add your direct effect, that is C complement, and you add your indirect effect which you can calculate by multiplying A and B. So if you add these, you will get your total effect. So this here is your direct effect and the effect flowing from X to M to Y is your indirect effect. Now there are different forms of indirect effects. There could be partial mediation when some of the effect is passing through M and some of the effect is passing directly. When the indirect path from X to M and M to Y is significant and the direct path here is also significant. So this is partial mediation. Full mediation is where you have a significant indirect effect from X to Y. That is your impact on X on Y is passing through your variable M. However, your direct effect is insignificant. That is the effect from X to Y is insignificant. The whole effect of X on Y is actually passing through this third variable which we call M. In this case, we can call it full mediation because all of the effect is passing through this particular variable or the mediating variable M. In this case, some of the effect was passing directly while some of the effect was indirect. So what is complementary mediation? Complementary mediation is where the indirect effect, that is the effect passing through M, and the direct effect, that is the impact of X on Y in presence of the mediator, both have similar influence. For example, both having a positive influence. In this case, we call it complementary mediation. However, competitive mediation is where the indirect effect, that is the effect of X on Y through M, and the direct effect, that is the effect of X on Y, 
they have dissimilar influence. What do we mean by dissimilar influence? The direct effect is negative as in the example and the indirect effect is positive. So they have different signs. In this case, we call it competitive mediation. Now, how do we test mediation? The research by Barron and Kenny in 1986 was one of the fundamental frameworks for how to test mediation. Over the years, research has refined their initial work on testing mediation. I think it's a worthy pursuit to discuss where mediation testing started and where it progressed today. Barron and Kenny stated that there were four steps in testing mediation. Number one, make sure that X has a significant influence on Y, that is your C path in absence of M must be significant. Your step two, it tests that X has a significant influence on M, that is your A path, and no Y is included. This needs to be significant as well. Your step three, it tests that X has a significant influence on M, and M has a significant influence on Y, both A and B are significant. And your step four, it tests the direct and indirect relationship simultaneously and determines if and what type of indirect effect is present. A, B and C paths are all being evaluated. So you've got your IV, your DV and the mediator in the same model. Now what are the criticisms on Baron Kenny approach? The first is, the Baron and Kenny method was based on finding the unstandardized coefficients for each relationship and then determining significance using Sobel test. As the research has progressed, this method of testing mediation has changed and Sobel testing has been rejected as a valid means of testing mediation. Even in the initial steps outlined by Baron and Kenny, these have changed as well. The first step that the C path needs to be significant is not a requirement anymore. Your indirect effects can be present even if a non-significant C path is initially found. So even though your total effect initially the impact of X on Y is insignificant, you can still have a significant indirect effect. The justification is based on the idea that there are suppressor effects that prevent the C path from being significant but the indirect effect is still present. The idea that A path and B path have to individually be significant have been rejected as well. Hayes in 2018 notes that indirect effect is the product of A and B and the statistical significance of either A or B is not a requirement for the mediation. So your A and B path may be insignificant, but still you can have a significant indirect effect. Now how do we test mediation? The revised method is now concerned with assessing the indirect effect by examining the product of A path and the B path while controlling for the direct effect of the C path. Now since the Sobel test is flawed for this type of test, the more accepted approach in mediation testing is to use a bootstrap technique to determine significance. A bootstrap technique treats your data sample like a pseudo population and takes a random sample with a replacement to determine if your indirect effect falls within the confidence interval. So what you're doing is you are actually treating your whole sample as a new population whereby through random number generation that particular sample is used to generate another sample. Maybe 5000, 10,000, 1000 or any number of bootstrap samples are generated. Let us now perform a mediation analysis in Smart PLS using a CVSCM. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into the impact of organizational commitment on organizational performance through collaborative culture. In the last session, we assessed the direct impact of OC and CC on OP. Now what I've done is I've slightly changed the model and I'm taking CC as my mediator. Now again, remember, you do not check mediation or structureless relationship unless or until you have assessed the measurement model, which we did in the earlier sessions. Now, how do we get this model? You simply have to add these variables from the left. Just drag them and drop them here one by one. And once you do that, just press enter to have it. Once you do them, 
you have to link these variables now to test the mediation what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to calculate and first again now since this is my model and one more thing before i go on and test anything you do not just first test the direct relationships then assess the mediation model this is against the essence of structural equation modeling now structural equation modeling as a technique is for complex modeling now if you have mediators or moderators in the model try to have them in one single model whereby you assess the direct relationship between variables and you assess the indirect relationship and the moderation relationship or moderating effect as well so let's say this is the model for my study as a whole so in order to test this i do not need separate models to test the impact of oc on cc and then cc on op and then oc on op no i can have just one model like this and now i can assess the individual relationships plus the mediation relationship as well first again this is my model so i'm going to look into the model fit and let's use defaults look at the model fit again the p value will be significant because the sample size is high well rmsc is quite high these are appropriate this is good well not very good this is appropriate now again there are model fit issues but i will explain how to solve these model fit issues in coming sessions now once i have assessed the measurement model and uh, after that in the structural model the first thing i have assessed the model fit and to report the model fit just the same way you report the model fit for measurement model you report the model fit for structural model as well we are going to talk about this in the coming session as well whereby i provide you with an example as to how to report structural model with the model fit and the relationships as well now to run this model go to calculate cbscm bootstrapping now 10000 is normally recommended now 5000 to 10000 i'm just going to keep it to 1000 bias corrected and accelerated bootstrap one tailed because i have proposed that these relationships are positive fixed seed so again when you run this bootstrapping again and again the results do not change let's press start Now here are my results now if you look here the outer model this is the outer model i'm not interested in the outer model i'm interested in the inner model to assess the relationship between variables i'm going to change it to standardize let's say path coefficients and p-values and i'm going to hide my indicators because i'm not interested in the indicators well you have to go back and do it so if you go to path coefficients you will see the direct relationship which i was referring to earlier you do not need to make or design separate structural model to assess each of the individual relationship now here the results are significant as we have already discussed this in the last session now in this case we'll come to specific indirect effects this is what i'm interested in i'm interested in assessing whether the impact of oc on op through cc is significant or in other words whether cc mediates the relationship between oc and op does it well yes it does because the p-value is less than 0.05 so since the p-value is less than 0.05 we can say that cc mediates the relationship between oc and op furthermore look at the t statistics it is less than 1.645 because i chose one tail test now this is your indirect effect and you get this by multiplying your impact of oc on cc and cc on op which you get here now this is unstandardized let's go to the standardized ones here so if you multiply oc with cc this here 0.663 with cc to op you will get 0.189 now make sure you are using standardized here and then standardized here as well here it is now there is mediation but now i want to know whether this is partial mediation or full mediation so the direct effect oc to op let's go to standardized oc to op is significant so when your direct effect and the indirect effect both the effects are significant this means partial mediation because now some of the effect is passing directly while some of the effect is passing indirectly through cc but what if with the presence of the mediator this effect is insignificant 
This means the whole effect of OC on OP is passing through CC. This means full mediation, provided the indirect effect is significant as well. Now, how do I report these results? Now, let me first hide these indicators. Now, meanwhile, I'll run it and let's go to see how do we report it. The mediation analysis results. Now, again, if you've got individual relationships that you are checking, you can have direct relationships and then you can report your mediation analysis. So what we can do is the study assess the mediating role of CC in the relationship between OC and OP. The results revealed a significant indirect effect or impact of OC on OP. The results revealed that, okay, rather we can say the results revealed a significant indirect effect or impact of OC on OP. Let's make some corrections. So where is the beta value of indirect effect? That was 0 0.189 if you remember correctly. And what was the T value? Let's look at the T value and the P value as well. Now, the specific indirect effects, 3.562. It is 3.562. 3.562. Three point five six two, and the p-value was 0 0.000. So we will write it like this: zero point zero zero one. This supports your H one. Well, you you may have it as H four, H five, or any other hypothesis. Now, furthermore, the direct impact of OC on OP in the presence of the mediator was also significant. So, what was your direct impact? Go to path coefficients standardized because you are using standardized for indirect effect as well. So, the impact of the direct impact, where is the direct impact? OC on OP. So the direct impact of OC on OP, 0 0.465 and the p-value 0, 0.000. 0 0.465. 0 0.465. 0 0.0 the p-value is less than 0 0.001. Hence, CC partially mediated the relationship between OC and OP. Why partially? Because the direct and indirect effects both were significant. Now you can obviously Put this here, the direct effect, what was the direct effect, 0.465, the p-value is fine, the indirect effect is 189, and you can add the p-value here as well. And the confidence interval, what was the p-value of the indirect effect? Well, since I'm putting it here, let me remove it from here. Now, what was the lower level and upper level confidence interval? Here it is confidence intervals bias corrected now I need it for the indirect effect just make sure you are right clicking the right option so here it is 0 0.102 0 0.275 so there is no zero in between these values so this means that your hypothesis is accepted there is mediation now when you've got both direct and indirect relationships what you can do is let me now there is obviously not a book readily available on a CBSC I'm using smart PLS so for text I'm using uh, this particular book or for theory or theoretical concepts this book is utilized now again coming here so when you are doing SCM what you need to do is you first write about your measurement model and in the measurement model you write about reliability then you write about validity and then for example, if you're doing your structure model, the first thing, if you've got direct relationships, just do direct relationships, H1, H2, H3, then you write about your mediations and then the moderator if you have got them. Now, this is how you do it. Now, in the last session, we did talk about direct relationships and how to report them and the video will be shared in the description. So this is how you can run mediation analysis in Smart PLS when you are using CBSCM. I hope this session would have helped you understand the concept of mediation and how to run it, analyze it, interpret it and report it. Thank you very much.